Mock Scrape Day, that's what we'll call it. It is Mock Scrape Day. This is just an old pin oak that my father planted back when I was a little kid. And the thing is, I mean, it's two feet across. This thing has grown. It just shows you how old I am, I guess. But we're gonna clip a couple of oak tree branches. The reason I like to use the oak tree branches for mock scrapes is because they keep their leaves pretty much for years, like two years, those leaves will still be on there, still inspiring deer to come in there and use those licking branches. So I'll clip these off of there and they will last us all the way through the 2021 crossbow seasons. I think we're doing this the right time of year. You know how I know? I've walked around the backside of this tree here looking for a good branch, looking for something that's still got lots of leaves on it that's gonna work out good for for uh, to keep the leaves and be nice and healthy. And something about, I'm looking for something about as big around as my finger so it'll fit nicely in the holes that we drilled. And I'll explain that more. And if you haven't seen it before, there's other videos I did about this, but I'll explain it more during this video. But I know this is the time of year for this because look what I just found. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. Get right in on that. That is a scrape, a scrape put in by deer without me asking them to come up here and do it. And they're using this little worn out branch right here, apparently, as a licking branch. I'm betting this has all kinds of deer odor on it that you and I can't decipher. But nonetheless, they're rubbing right here. They're licking that, they're rubbing their foreheads on that. And they're digging the ground right there and using this as a scrape location. Can you believe that? And we're in the front yard of the house. So like they're doing this at nighttime, of course, right? Good time to talk about that. Some people say, well, they only use the scrapes during the nighttime. So there's no point in hunting over scrapes. That's fine and dandy if that's your thought, if that's what you, it doesn't really fit in with your hunting strategy, that's fine. But in my experience, if you have these in the right location where deer will normally be during the day anyway, then the, these scrapes work out beautifully. They're just a great tool if you got them in the right spot. So I've over time figured out the right spots for these sort of things we're only going to put the branches in the right spots so we will have daytime activity especially during the rut when deer are moving through there using those trails pretty heavy bucks are moving around in the mornings in my experience they will stop in those locations and check out those scrapes and this is all about shot placement opportunity placement placing the deer in front of you at 20 yards or 30 yards or whatever it is you feel comfortable with we just realized the brand of clippers that we have is Corona. That's not good. <laughs> so what we're looking for is a good selection of branches. This guy right here. Oh man, should have brought bigger clippers. These things are, ooh. See, this is the kind of branch you want, Genevieve. So this thing got a nice flat cut here, nice healthy spot where I can put this in and I can shorten it up if need be. But I can also, I can stick it out there. I can turn it this way. I can point it up in the air if I want to, depending on the height I'm looking for, for my mock scrape that we're going to put in. So there is one perfect specimen. <laughs> six. Count them, six. <laughs> Oak tree branches. Got about a good assortment, you know, some are a little skinnier than others to fit in different holes, maybe uses different sort of setups. Don't know until we get there, until we look at it. We don't really know what we're dealing with. But with these six, that'll do three scrapes. I got two for each scrape, plenty. Should work out good. This is one of the reasons that you leave stumps in your food plot so that you have little workbenches. So Genevieve is going to demonstrate how we remove branches from a scrape tree. Yep. Uh, all right so that worked you think <laughs> yeah so far so good <laughs> it's coming stay on it straight you'll be better off nice. that's a long one huh yeah there we go <laughs> got it out of there all right throw that down let's get both of them out of here they don't need to be anywhere near there's the, that's where we put old branches right over there, apparently. Yeah. And then we're gonna toss that dude. All right, select two nice ones. I think those branches, we've got quite an assortment there that we selected, but I think we've got different sizes. 
Shouldn't be able to make it work good. Put it right on your... I know. I'll um, see in which size it needs first. Okay. I guess I don't tell you how to do everything. I suppose. That's just what daddies do. Get at the dentist. There you go. Looks good. Yep. All right, pick out some branches. Why don't you? You just set that down. I know my fingers are sticky. <laughs> oh, I wonder what that's from. Sap. Yeah. How about this guy? Well, it really depends on the size of the. Let's look at the bottom. What's that look like? Does that look like the appropriate size, would you say? Yep. Now, that's kind of pointing out the wrong direction, if you look, because our hole, our scrape, is over here that you're standing on, which is fine. Let's turn it. Yeah. Ooh. See what that does? Let me get where I can demonstrate Done. that. With it. <laughs> Ta-da. Yep. <laughs> Maybe turn it just a little bit more. Um, do you think that's too low? My concern is that's too low because that's probably better. I remember when is I was, cause too tall, maybe I don't think that's too, right there, right okay. there where you okay. have it now. Okay. That's where you want it. We're going to stick that fast. And the reason for that is our blind is up in here. Guess where that is. You can see it from here. You can see it pretty good. It actually stands out. I was talking in a previous video about that and how I like that setup. But with this at that level, we're going to be shooting down through here, okay? And a deer that's working that, I don't want the branches obscuring any shot potential, potential shot that we have. Why don't you give it a shot here? Let me go stick that screw good. in here. If you put it, do you know how to put it in here good? I think. I bet you can. I bet you can do a good job. That's it. That is guaranteed buck proof. Oh, I think it is. I think that's good. Now, you got to be pretty careful with these dudes. Good. I think it's in there great, kid. I think you did a fantastic job. I think you are a top notch mock scrape hanger. Okay. We got one more in there that we want to kind of use to double up the branch, but bring it this way because the other hole will do just that nicely. You Let's see. Stick it in here, see how it goes. Yeah, let's go to try, right? Let's see. You did such a good job on that one. I really don't know that you need my input. Oh, and you're doing just what I would do, which is turn it down a little bit. Oh, see, this is what I like. Now it's kind of pointing down in there and thickening up the other one. Can you get it so it stays up better? And it's not putting weight on the first one. You don't want to put weight on the first one. Let her grab you, aren't they? If you want, we can take some. Oh, oh. I'm going to get a thicker one. Okay. It doesn't sit in there. That right almost looks nice, though. This guy, I think. I think this is the first one you've ever done. I think so. The big old centipede, see him? Look at that guy. That's a long one. He won't eat much. No. I don't think he's going to stop you from having a good mock scrape. Oh. Oh, boy. Maybe flip it. Oh, no. No. You're going to leave that right where okay. it is. Wow. Wow, is that beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. That is going to be worked up good. This whole time, the camera, by the way, has been filming us, I bet. Hi, camera. do have a camera over there up in the air kind of pointed down at our mock scrape and I think that's the way to do this stuff keeping them at eye level not good so I'm going to stick a screw in there and we'll be done with this little project she's 
she is wrapping that up. Look at that mock scrape. That's primo. That's primo. That gets me pretty excited about the potential hunt in that little blind up there and the opportunities that we might have in this little micro food plot, this bait sized food plot. Check this out. That burn down really turned out nice. Bottom end of the ridge staging food plot, nice and dead. All that stuff's drying right up when I come back in here to plant in the next week or so. We'll have really good seed bed. So we're just looking for a rainy day. We'll come in here and we will rake this all out of here, get the thickest of it out of here, put the seed on nice and heavy, nice and heavy before a good rain. And then we'll put some of this duff, this crap here, this little this stuff, right? We'll put some of that back on top of the seeds and that will protect it from the birds, protect it from the animals, whatnot, and hopefully give us a really, really nice ambush spot here at the ridge staging food plot location. <laughs> Genevieve is doing such a great job with these mock scrapes. She's going to put in another one. Get to it, kid. Okay. She's getting a bit out here. We are in the hemlocks, can you tell? And, oh, Genevieve, are you looking? We just got here and set her gear up. But look at that. They're a step ahead of us. That's beech leaves, and Genevieve is inspecting the holes that we drilled in. With that paddle bit, cleaning out a nice hole. And I've done videos on this before. And you just drill it out. And then you put a branch of your choosing in here. Beach is a good choice. There's a lot of beach down in here. Beach is a good choice for two reasons. Number one, it keeps its leaves. These nut bearing trees, mass producing trees, in my experience, do tend to keep their leaves a little longer, even though they're dead and screwed in there. Um, they do tend to keep their leaves a little better, which attracts deer. So these, by putting these in here, they last definitely for a season. And you can see like this is still getting people, right? Some people. This is still getting deer activity under it. So this, the new ones though, these oak branches out of the front yard, those are a great choice. Those go a long way in attracting deer and holding their leaves. She's stripping screws and we're gonna have to get over there. Oh, is it coming? Well, one is. One is coming, okay. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll get them out of there. And we're gonna clean out those holes and put in some new ones. And in case you missed the last V-log, the V-log, right? Right over there, there's the blind over there staring at you with that big old eye, staring at you through the woods. But in the morning time, a deer coming up this trail right here, I don't think is gonna have too much problem, too much cause for concern. He's gonna walk right up here. Pay no attention to that blind, don't worry about that. He's gonna come up here up this trail, looking for some fun, looking for some, some uh, girlfriends or something. And he's gonna find Genevieve's mock scrape right up there. How cool is that? I think that's pretty cool. It's gonna work, okay? If we, It's the timing of our hunts that is gonna be crucial. Morning hunts, I think, better in this location from based on my experience with the trail cameras, all that fun stuff. Looks like she got both of those out there. Let's go inspect those holes and see how she's doing. Look how you put that screw in. How am I supposed to get that out? Oh, you didn't get it out? No, it's in sideways. <laughs> well, we'll get it out of there. We don't wanna leave screws in the trees, that's no. for sure, because it's not good for the trees, but it's really not good for loggers down the road either. We'll get the paddle bits and clean these out a little bit, clean them out. Well, I can get that out of there. We'll get it out of there. There's little mosquitoes down here that are like, you only find them in the hemlocks. They're the same kind of mosquitoes that I had when I was in Maryland hunting sika deer. Get up here on the, in the swamps and stuff. There's a swamp behind me here. But you get the right bit and get that bad boy on there. Look how easy that comes out. Now, one little tip on this dude. Well, I dropped it. One little tip on these dudes. I use the galvanized screws because they won't rot down and break off. There's, these things are sitting inside that tree and the moisture and all that. This way they don't rot off and they come out easier year after year after year. We can reuse them, can't beat it. All right, and then this one where it broke off, we're gonna drill that, the remains of that out of there. Just cleaning it out a little bit. You're gonna get one small dude. That'll work. Very good. All right. There. Did it go in or? Yeah. Oh, it did? Yeah. Now, if it's, I don't want to shorten it, but you could shorten it too. You could cut it off up here and make it thinner if you had to, but we want enough reach to go out to where they're scraping. So this is the area where they're scraping and doing all their business. So that's, that's the spot we want to keep free there. I think that's good. Okay. Stick her fast. Is it too tall? Nope. 
We don't want short bucks. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we're done accommodating small bucks, Genevieve. This is, we're all about the big bucks. See, that's what we do. 160 inches or better. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a 160 inch deer. On TV. Oh, yeah. You're gonna with a scrape like this. This is the mock scrape that we put in years ago. If you look, believe it or not, it's not even a real tree. That is a post. It's an old elm post that I cut the chainsaw, and right there's the top of it. It is just a post. So it's basically a fence post put in the ground solely for the purpose of having a mock scrape attached to it, my licking branches. But it's in a good spot, because if you look here, I'm gonna zoom out here, pan out here a little bit. Look at all these weeds. You can't even tell what's out there until I lift you up in the air. You can kind of see, this would be higher than a buck's view. But looking down at it, you can kind of tell where that food plot is going to be. This is the well pad food plot. Can you believe it? You're familiar with that. That's the well pad. That's how it gets its name. But I've had a food plot here this entire distance all the way down there to the corner. It's almost an acre. And it's in its prime, it was almost an acre. Now it is going to be like 0 0.02 acres or something. It is a bait-sized food plot and additional bait added in the form of this mock scrape. This is an old elm. Pretty neat little old thing. Good use for a tree that isn't going to live past this size anyway. That Dutch elm disease kills all these guys when they get to about that size. So this was dead. I cut it and makes a great, makes great firewood. Great scrape post. It'll last forever. Things in here good. I mean, it's still nice and firm in there. You know what I mean? I can barely wiggle it. So, but it's in the ground real good. It's down three feet. But these branches go right in there. This wood's all dead, so I screwed them in there good. They went in there real nice. So there's the blind. You can see the top of that over there. 31 yards, I think it was, from the tree when I was measuring it from the tree. So a buck that's working this scrape right here, this future scrape, a buck is going to be 30 yards on the nose. All you got to do is wait for a broadside shot. Put in three mock scrapes today, and that's a pretty good pretty good day, pretty good use of our time. That is now checked off the list. We don't have to worry about that for future episodes of Death by Bungie, but we also don't have to worry about it for future projects. I'm trying to balance making the videos with getting some of these projects done. It's very important. Two things I want to talk about real quick on the mock scrapes, though, before we let you go. One is oak, okay? You don't have to worry about the fact that these are oak branches sticking out of an elm tree. Deer don't care if this is oak branches sticking out of a hemlock tree, maple tree, what have you. I have them. In fact, one that we did, the rich staging food plot, that's in a maple tree. This is a dead elm, and the other one is in a hemlock tree. So none of them are in an oak tree. I don't think we've got any oaks down here in the woods. Never come across one. So it doesn't really matter what kind of tree you use. I just drill these holes like this, right? Drill a hole in there, use a nice screw in there, and make sure you take screws out when you're done. But the, it doesn't seem to hurt the trees any. It's fine. All good. Um, don't do this on state game lands, obviously. There are other trees you can use for this. I like the nut-bearing trees, the beech, stuff like that. There are people who have said that they like hemlock for that. I've used hemlock in the past. Don't really care for hemlock for that. Hemlock's got a lot of needles. Maybe that whole scent real nice. That might be good. But the hemlock seems to die real fast. And it doesn't even seem to make it through the season. I'll come back. And in October, November, these leaves will still be green probably, maybe coloring a little bit. But they'll stay on there good into next year if the deer don't eat them or what have you. So it's nice to have that on there. I like those leaves because that's a, more of an attraction than bare branches. The deer will still, you know, work the branches or whatever, but man, they like the leaves because that holds the scent and everything too, I'm thinking. So I don't like the hemlock for that reason. They seem to go dry up and dead. There are other methods of doing this, and that's the other thing I wanted to say. There are other methods where people use vines. Jeff Sturgis is a big proponent of the mock scrapes. I watch, don't know the guy, but I can tell you I've watched all of his videos, I think every one of them, and Whitetail Habitat Solutions. Go check that channel out. It's a great channel if you're not on there already. 
and he knows an awful lot about the white-tailed deer, way f more information than I can give you. And I think that his method of making those scrapes is really, really good. I don't do that because I don't see a lot of vines here to use for that purpose, but, and because this is working for us, okay? If I were on leased property, property where I had permissions to use, but it wasn't my property or whatever, it might be different, but here, nobody cares if I go and drill these holes and put these posts in and all that fun stuff. I like doing this stuff, so. We're in good shape there. The next, last thing I'm gonna do, carve out a little path here so the deer can get a give us a broadside peak over there at the blind but we got to weed whack some of this we can do that next time but get that it'll make a little more visibility for that scrape I'll open this area up a little bit so that it's nice and open right here I'm not going to open up the whole area because I don't want them to be able to see in there without coming in here I want a deer to have to come to this scrape in order to find out what's going on in the well pad food plot so we'll clean up this area right here for a scrape and hopefully it'll get some activity. We're gonna pitch a little camera over here and in future videos, we'll share the results of that. Also, I'll share the results of that in the free Death by Bungie email newsletter. If you haven't signed up for that already, you should do so. You should go to deathbybungie.com and sign up for the free, free email newsletter. And I'll send trail camera pictures on that as well as the season progresses. That'll be good stuff. Mock Scrape Fest has come to an end for this year at least. Genevieve has pitched her blind and she's on the way back over. There she is. Until next time, all hail Bungie.